This GRE question involving algebra in the quantitative comparison section shows us why the answers to the quantitative comparison question are determined by the format of the question. Which do you think is larger? The square root of x to the fourth plus six to the x to the squared plus nine or column B, x squared plus three. Before we pick our right answer, consider what some of your friends do, who recognize that they don't quite remember everything from high school about algebra. They might remember that they can square both sides because the quantity should still have the relationship, and they could make column B into x squared plus 3 squared. But then, what do they do? But they might simply square x squared and get x to the fourth, and then square 3 and get 9, and think column B is x to the fourth plus 9. When they compare it to column A, they'll pick answer A because column A looks bigger. Since this is a mistake, the test makers can't make answer A the correct answer, or these confused people will get lucky and find their answer by accident. Other students who realize they don't remember their algebra from high school will choose a simpler strategy and simply plug in a number. So they can make x2. That makes column a 2 to the 4th plus 6 times 2 to the squared plus 9, and column b is 2 squared plus 3 squared. But what happens to a student who correctly recognizes the 2 to the 4th is 16, but in the middle of the test gets confused and thinks that 2 squared is actually 8. They then add 8 to 3 and get 11 squared for column B. The student correctly figures out that column A is equal to 49, but because of that one little mistake, they think that column B is actually 121. These students will pick answer B because the quantity in column B looks greater. So that means that the right answer can't be B, because if it were, these confused students would actually pick the right answer for the wrong reasons. At this point, you might be tempted to pick answer D, because the relationship cannot be determined from the information given, because two different people got two different answers, but remember, each of those answers was a mistake, so the answer can't be answer D either. So how can we come up with a correct algebraic solution? And more importantly, how do the testers know that we came up with that correct solution? We can square both sides and keep the relationship the same, but we have to remember in column B that when we square x squared plus 3, we have to multiply it by x squared plus 3. We need to multiply the two first elements, x squared times x squared, to get x to the fourth. We can multiply the two outer elements together, x squared and 3, to get 3x squared. Then you multiply the two inside elements together, 3 and x squared, to get 3x squared again. And finally, we multiply the two last elements together, 3 and 3, to get 9. Most students remember this from high school as FOIL. When you combine the common elements, column B turns in x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 9. After all this squaring and multiplying and adding, we've finally proven that the two quantities are equal and we pick answer C. That's why we know what the testers know, that on the quantitative comparison question, if they give students a complicated computation with lots of unpredictable mistakes, the only way they can tell that people got it exactly right is to make the answer exactly equal and complicated computations are C. Testing for the public. Nonprofit since 1985. No one makes things easier.